We are preaching right now according to Acts 20, 24, the gospel of the grace of God. That's the gospel we preach. Christ died for your sins. You can be born again. It's called the gospel of the grace of God. We're in the period of grace. God is good, and we can be assured of His great care and love for us every day. There is no fear when our hearts are set on God. Join Gloria Copeland and her guest, Billy Brim, on today's Believer's Voice of Victory. Hello, everybody. Billy and I are back. This is our last day of this great teaching on what's going to happen in the rapture and the second coming. Hallelujah. So Billy is going to share some mighty things with us during this. Now you sit down and pay attention. That's right. You're going to need to sit down today. That's right. Get your Bible out. Yes. And uh, this is the day I've been waiting to get to. Okay. Well, All the week long I've been reviewing this scripture, this statement from uh, Clarence Larkin in the book of Daniel. In Revelation 4, the church is caught out and passes through the open door into heaven. This is the rapture of the church described in 1 Thessalonians. 4, 13 through 18. And from the fifth chapter of Revelation to the 19th inclusive, we have a description of the whole of Daniel's 70th week, which covers end time of this dispensation. From this, we see that three things here. Daniel's 70th week, I'm asking them to put up something for you to see. Daniel's 70th week, Daniel 9, 24 through 27, what Jesus said in his Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24, and John Seals, Trumpets and Vials, Revelation 6, 1 through 18, 24, cover the same period and are Jewish and have no reference to the church. Daniel draws the outline in his 70th week, one week of years. Jesus roughs in the picture in his Olivet Discourse, and John fills in the details in the book of Revelation. What Daniel condenses in one verse, Jesus says in one chapter, John enlarges to 13 chapters. Now we're going to compare. There is great misunderstanding in the church on Matthew 24. You have to rightly divide the word, and we're going to rightly divide it now. Okay. Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. The temple had been refurbished under Herod. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So he's prophesying that the temple, the second temple will be destroyed. That alarms his apostles. The temple is on Mount Moriah. They walk, cross over the Kidron Valley, and they go up to the Mount of Olives. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, asking, Number one, tell us when shall these things be? When shall the temple be destroyed? Second temple. And what shall be the sign of your coming mm. and of the end of the age? Glory. Your coming, here the word is parousia. It was always used to speak of the coming of a king or an emperor. So they're saying, well, he said the temple's going to be destroyed, so he must be going to set up the kingdom. And they didn't realize there'd be 2,000 years between them. Yeah. So they got, you've got to decide when you go down through here, which are they talking about? And also in Luke 21, it gives us an account of this. But the one in Matthew 24 particularly is speaking about the time of the tribulation, which would be when Jesus comes to set up his kingdom, just before he sets up his kingdom. Now we're going to compare these verses because we've been telling you that Daniel's 70th week, Matthew 24, and 13 chapters in the book of Revelation are all written about the time of the tribulation, seven-year period. Now we've been looking at the seals, opening the first seal. Those seals cover the whole seven-year period. They cover it from the beginning to the end. And the first seal revealed the Antichrist. He's coming forth at the first of that seven-year period. Now we're going to compare 
chapter 24 of Matthew with Revelation 6. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. And I saw... When the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We said yesterday, that is the Antichrist. Here we go to Matthew 24. One, a uh, four, excuse me. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for Many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. Of course, at that time, during the tribulation period, there are going to be people that claim to be the Messiah. And one of them is the Antichrist. So, we see that verses 4 and 5 in Matthew 24 are parallel with Revelation 6, 1 and 2, the rider on the white horse. Now, we go to the rider on the red horse. And when he, verse 3, Revelation 6, 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. This is war. Now that is parallel with the next verses in Matthew 6 and 7. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. Mm. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Now we're going to the writer on the next horse. Revelation chapter 6, 5 and 6. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. And I saw a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four creatures say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, but see that you don't hurt the oil and the wine. This matches Revelation 24, 7, and there shall be famines. That's the writer, and these are the famines. Now... We're going to go back to Revelation 6, 7, and 8. The fourth horse, the fourth rider. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 24, the middle of the verse, and pestilences and earthquakes shall be in diverse places. This matches the rider on the fourth horse because there will be death, mm. pestilences, earthquakes, death. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Remember? Travail, the birth pangs. They begin at the beginning of those seven year period. Revelation chapter 6, 9 through 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. These are the tribulation period saints. And this is uh, per tribulation period, martyrs, excuse me, not saints, martyrs. And so here we see those martyrs and their martyrdom in Matthew 24, 9 through 13. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall Deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This is the tribulation period. They will be killed. They will be persecuted. Some of them, their souls will be persecuted early, and they'll cry out, vengeance, vengeance. But from heaven, the Father says, no, 
You wait until all the number is complete, until all the tribulation period martyrs are filled up and complete. And here comes this verse 13. He that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. This is talking about people in the tribulation period. Not saved born again, but sure. saved alive during the tribulation period. Some people have misunderstood this. I heard about in old time uh, Pentecostal um, testimonial services. They would stand up and say, you all pray for me that I'll endure to the end to be saved. Well, you know, if you're saved, right, if you're born again under the period of grace, you're born again right now. That's right. But in this, the period of grace is not there. So this the church is, a, is gone. Yeah, the church is gone. All the seals are open. All the seals we're are open. We're out of here. Even on the first if seal. we've made Jesus Christ the Lord of the That's right. Lives. On the first seal, we're gone out of here. But Glory now there are God. people on the earth, and this is what's going on on the earth. Mm -hmm. And they, and you who hold on to the end, this is a work salvation, will be saved. Now here's one of the verses that people really are mixed up about. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This is the gospel of the kingdom that's about to be set up. It's not the gospel of the grace of God. We are preaching right now, according to Acts 20, 24, the gospel of the grace mm -hmm. of God. That's the gospel we preach. Christ died for your sins. You can be born again. It's called the gospel of the grace of God. We're in the period of grace, Acts 20, 24. B but Matthew 24 is the, is the tribulation time. It matches exactly Daniel's 70th week. It matches the book of Revelation. And during this time, the gospel that's being preached is the gospel of the kingdom that's about to be set up on the earth. The gospel that Jesus Christ is about to come, hang on, hold on, uh, believe us. We're going to find later next time we come back in the next session when we get together, there will be 144,000 young Jewish evangelists preaching. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to say, the, God, the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. He's going to set up this kingdom. Praise now, Matthew God. 24 and uh, 15. Matthew 24. Look at this. We know this is tribulation period because look, what is the next thing Jesus said? 14th verse says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. They'll, every nation on the earth they'll get to, those 144,000. Verse 15, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. This is Jesus talking. He said, when you see the abomination of desolation stand in the holy place, when you see the Antichrist go and stand in the temple and say that he's God, then you don't go to Jerusalem. He's not talking to the church. We're not going to see the abomination of desolation. But if you don't rightly divide, if you don't know that it's the New Testament letters that are written to the church and tell you who you are, and what you're going to do and where you're going to be, even the book of Revelation and Thessalonians telling you you're going to be raised, then you might say, oh, we got to stay here. we got to tribulate. Jesus told us what to do. He didn't tell you what to do. Thank you, Jesus. Your Bible is not going He's to rapture with you. It's going to be left here on the earth. And people are going to be looking at it. These 144,000 are going to say, get out the book. Get out Matthew. They're going to be looking in here. Ah, Antichrist Glory is breathing hot down their neck. Mm -hmm. <gasps> they're going to find this 144,000 and say, turn to Matthew, turn to Matthew. So they're going to read this. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. There's a blessing on this. Whoever's reading this, somebody during the tribulation time, and they're going to be reading this and they're going to say, whoso readeth, let him understand. There's a granting of understanding to them from the Father. Praise then God. let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. You're not going to be in Judea, but there will be people who are in Judea. And they're told, let them flee into the mountains. These are instructions to be followed. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. In other yeah. words, hurry. Neither let him which is in the field return to take his clothes. And dwell unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. It's going to be hard on the mothers with the babies. Hmm. But pray ye, verse 20. Pray ye. Prayer is still going to work during the tribulation period. Pray ye 
that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. He's writing to Jews, particularly to Jews. There are some Orthodox Jews, even with the Antichrist breathing down their neck, who would not get in the car and travel on the Sabbath. But he's, so he's telling them, pray that it won't be on the Sabbath, well, so those will be saved too. Well, thought of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not the Christians. Well, this isn't us. We wouldn't care about riding on the Sabbath. But they would, and he loves them. So he tells them what to do. Pray that it's not in cold weather, and pray that it's not on the Sabbath. Mm. For then, this is Jesus talking. If you have a red letter Bible, red letters, all of this. Give us your, uh, rev, uh, your scripture reference. Again. This 20, is Matthew 24, 21. 21. We're down to verse 21 right now. This is Jesus talking. Then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. Mm, mm, mm. To this time, no nor ever shall be. be. Again. Mm, mm, mm. And except those days should be shortened. This is the great tribulation period. Except those days should be shortened. There would be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. One person wrote in and said, Billy Brim said the elect are Israel. In another place, it speaks of the elect in the church. The church is in here. This is who's on the earth. And on the earth, there are some that are called the elect. It's not the church. We're in heaven. These, Thank you, Jesus. These are the elect that are of Israel. For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Those seven-year period shall be shortened. If it were not, there wouldn't be any flesh left. Then if man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. And there will be people claiming to be the Messiah, and they'll be so desperate for a Messiah. But he says, don't believe it. Verse 24, There shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. We see great signs and wonders um, coming about during the tribulation period. We see that the Shh. false prophet, he does signs and wonders. But here they're told, don't be deceived by him. Verse 25, Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he, the Messiah, is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chamber, don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talking to Jews living in that time, and he says, they're going to come and they're going to say, the Messiah is here. He's, he's down at En Gedi. He's in the caves. The Messiah's here. Uh, he's in the room. He's, he's in the upper room. No, he says, don't believe it. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines unto the west, so shall, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Don't be deceived, he tells them. Mm, when I come and set my feet down, it's going to be like lightning. Hallelujah. Everybody's going to see me. The Antichrist will be surrounding Zechariah 12 and Zechariah 14. He will be surrounding Jerusalem. But there comes in, in the, the Ooh, skies here, the lightning, the, 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 the glory, and comes a rider on a white horse with many riders right. behind him. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. This is not a secretive coming. It was secretive when he came and received the church unto himself. Verse 28, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. There's going to be a great war. You can read about it in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Also, there's a reference in Job 38, 30. Uh, the birds uh, that clean up, the vultures, the eagles, the ones that clean up dead flesh, uh, there's going to be a lot of carcass around for them to clean up. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then Glory shall appear the God. sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This matches Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 4, 17. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. You see that? It matches. It's the same time. Is that Revelation 12? That's Revelation 6, 12 through 17. Six. 
Revelation 6, 12 through 17 is the same as Matthew 24, verses 29 and 30. Same time. It says the stars of heaven shall fall. It says that in Matthew 24, 29. It says that in Revelation 6, 13. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven uh, opened, really, or departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the uh, dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to to stand it? So those chapters, they're corresponding. Revelation 6 and Matthew 24. And where will the... The church of Jesus Christ be those that have made Jesus the Lord. You of their keep lives. wanting to go over that over and over because we're want not here. To know it. I want, I want them to know, to know it. We're not here now for this. Now is the time to take care of business. We are not here for this. That's Bless right. the Lord. That's now right. you want to know when these things shall be because remember they ask him. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Uh, let's go back to this is uh, Matthew 24, 32 through 35. They ask him when shall these things be. Learn a parable of the fig tree. That's Israel. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Right now we can learn this parable of the fig tree. So likewise you, when you see all these things, know that he is near even at the very doors. I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father. As the days of Noah, so shall the days of the coming of the Son of Man be. Thank you. Marrying and giving in marriage. But the flood came, verse 39, and they knew not until the flood came and they took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Actually, the day and the hour that he's talking about that you don't know is the coming, the second coming when he puts his feet down on the earth. And it says here, 40, verse 40, then shall two be in the field, the one taken and the other left. This is not the rapture. This is the second coming. This chapter 24 matches the second coming. Then shall two be in the field, one taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one taken and the other left. That's the evils going out, and then he will leave those um, people who were here during that tribulation time. They'll be on the earth. They'll be there for the judgment of the nations. Watch you, therefore, uh, verse 42, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come, uh, but know this, that if the good man knew, he would not have, um, he would not have let the thief come in. And uh, so uh, when he comes as a thief, Revelation 16, 15 also is a reference here for you on this. Revelation 16, 15, behold, this is during the tribulation time. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments. Yes. When he comes as a thief in the night, It's not the rapture of the church. It's when he comes in the judgment in the second coming. When he comes to the church, he comes for love. We'll look up. We'll hear the voice. Great things will have been happening in the church. We will have been changed from glory to glory to glory to glory. We will become the glorious church uh, that Tommy Hicks prophesied about, that Brother Hagin prophesied about, and we will have been changed from glory to glory to glory to glory. Great changes are going on in the church. Glory and there will be a time when we'll walk like Tommy Hicks saw that we'll walk and we will be that glorious church. We will have one more cap sheath of glory and we will be out of here. When he comes as a thief in the night, it's not for the church. All the 24th chapter is about the period of Daniel's 70th week. It's about the period of 13 chapters. So when you read Matthew 24, we are through. And think about that, and the Lord will reveal it unto you. Bless the Lord. Awesome job, Billy. Glory to God. That is a mouthful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hallelujah. Billy, and I'll be right back. In 1967, Kenneth Copeland discovered that God is no respecter of persons. It's God's desire to heal, restore peace, and abundantly provide every need. What God has done for one believer who acts on his word, he'll do for any believer who acts on his word. 
Since 1967, Kenneth has shared that truth, which has transformed people's lives throughout the world. When a believer hears the word, believes it, and acts on what they believe, one word from God changes their life forever. Let's sow a praise offering today, praising God that we're going to be delivered from the wrath to come. Hallelujah. The scripture in uh, 2 Corinthians 9 says, but, but th this I say, he, that work, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able. You say, I don't know how God would ever get anything to me. Well, he's able. He can do it. You sow, you will reap, if you do it in faith. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. That's the will of God for us That's financially, that we have all sufficiency in all things. Glory to God. Now, Billy and I are going to pray over your finances right now, and you take hold of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. we lift up every person Thank listening you, to Jesus. this broadcast all over the world. And we know that you are able, we see here that you are able mm. to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to every one of those that sow and believe you, Lord. Everything we do must mm. be done in faith. And so we pray for the finances of the people today that they would begin to reap the harvest of all they have sown in this life Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name. Money, you come, come into the church, into, into the, the church. people of God to do the work of God. We love you, Lord. We Praise bless you. We believe we receive abundance in every believer's home, in every believer's situation. We believe for jobs. We believe for the blessing. We believe for the increase. And we give you all the praise and all, all the glory the in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've missed any of these broadcasts that Billy shared with us, you must go to kcm.org. It is vital information. You need to tell this to your family. You need to get your family ready. You may be the only one in your family that knows the truth. Well, get them born again. Tell them what's coming. Tell them the good news. Get in a good church that preaches the Word of God and grow up and become stronger and stronger. And watch the broadcast. Go back to the archives. I'm telling you, there's a wealth of the Word of God on the internet in the archives from this ministry and Brother Hagin's ministry and others. Ken and Jerry Savelle will be on the broadcast Monday. Don't re uh, miss it. They're going to be teaching on the favor of God, and that's extremely important. This is Billy and Gloria reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit kcm.org.